Much like the film's titular antagonist, the style of John Carpenter's 1982 thriller The Thing is difficult to identify because it assimilates others. The film exhibits the spectacle of a big-budget sci-fi film. The desolation of a western, especially from its gunslinging, gallon-headed protagonist McCready, played by Kurt Russell, and most famously, the gore of a slash thriller, thanks to the special effects prodigy Rob Bottom. Pretty creepy for bubblegum and latex. However, visuals aside, the soul of the film belongs to noir. Not in terms of aesthetics, Parker's beat trench coats in Antarctica, but in composition, exposition, and character. From the opening death to the ambiguous conclusion, the thing's plot unfolds in a typically noir fashion, following Mac as he muscles his way from clue to dangerous clue amid revelations and mounting tension. The thing's assimilation of noir style, however, is most apparent in the film's infamous blood test sequence. Rather than a shootout or chase scene, the thing uses this noir stable to capitalize on the film's claustrophobic sense of suspense. This formula of assembling all the film's remaining players into a climactic discovery of the true killer echoes genre-defining works such as The Maltese Falcon and Murder, My Sweet. This scene also underscores the film's ultimate dedication to deeper themes of paranoia, alienation, and suspicion, as opposed to less nuanced conclusions. McCready's presence as a noir hero, however, is the linchpin at the center of the thing's neo-noir status. More hammer than Marlowe, McCready's role as the troubled detective is supported by the centrality of his perspective. Additionally, the film seeks to discredit Mag as a narrator, seeding suspicions of his humanity and highlighting his mistakes. McCready's role as a gunslinger gumshoe is most established in his introduction. Prefaced with a shot of the research team playing ping pong in the common room, we then cut to Mac drinking alone in his shed, a desolate stand-in for the private offices where classic noir's anti-heroes are introduced. Playing chess against a computer as the research team socializes in the light is no small metaphor. Mac, like so many noir heroes, is defined by his ability to solve puzzles alone in the dark. Outmatched, but not without a dry sense of humor, the characterization is crowned with Mac's gruff response to being beaten by the computer program. Checkmate. Checkmate. She's a bitch. That right there is the closest the film comes to a femme fatale, though. The all-male casting joins the emphasis on gore as divergent factors that separate John Carpenter's The Thing from noir canon. I believe these traits, however, add more neo than less noir. The film's horror actually resonates with noir, as both thrive on tension and suspense. The thing's use of off-screen action, for example, echoes noir's use of implication to circumvent the code, while satisfying horror's need for fearful suspense. Even the film's diegetic sounds reinforce the shared need for a mood of impending doom. Media critic Robert Arnett offers an interesting compromise between this conflict of eras and genres. Sorting Bordeaux and Chaumontan's belief that noir's roots are historical and derived from a disaffected era in film, Arnett applies this logic to 80s Hollywood, dominated by names such as Spielberg and Hughes, Rambo and Schwarzenegger. Cinema reflected Reaganite America, celebrating suburbia and families, while reaffirming America's values and machismo post-Vietnam. More time. I don't know how this one ends. Arnett argues, however, that some filmmakers went counterculture but parallel to classic noir with 80s directors such as Lynch and Carpenter, and works such as Miami Vice and L.A. Confidential, meeting post-war disillusionment with darkness, isolation, and plenty of soul-searching. It's anachronistic, but it works. Arctic cowboys and aliens, noir themes in Reaganite America. In many ways, by being so far ahead of its time, John Carpenter's The Thing was actually getting in touch with its cinematic past. And framed from that approach, nothing is more dark, timeless, and contradictory than a neo-noir.